Hi guys, this is Donna with Love Rocks and we have got a little mushroom house today that we're going to do. Uh, let's start off by saying thank you for all of you who have subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, please do and make sure that you comment so that you're in the drawing for this particular rock. Okay, let's get started. So I didn't do a lot of sketching on this rock because I needed to do a nice background. I did sketch in a small amount after we get the background put in um, for the mushroom. But to start out, let's make sure that we get that blue sky in there. And then we're gonna dab in uh, with a sponge, a little bit of white. That's gonna be some clouds and you wanna be able to see through those clouds. You don't want it too dark. So make sure that you do it sparingly. I actually added a little bit of water into my white when I dabbed it on so that I wouldn't get it too thick onto the blue sky. Dab that across. If you get too much, you can always go back in, add a little more blue until you get it to where you want it to be. You want it to have a lot of variation of the clouds so that you've got a nice deep background that's got some clouds, some thinness, and some, um, and some skylight. We're gonna eventually put some stars in there. Then we're going to go ahead and sketch out our little mushroom house and um, very simple uh, shapes for this little mushroom house. So not a difficult sketch at all. Get that sketched in and then we're going to start. Most of the colors I used in this were earth tone colors. I used brown, black, white. Um, I used three different uh, colors of brown in this. I used a camel. Um, I did add a little bit of red into parts of it to do both the roof and into the uh, front door, um, but basic colors. And then we added a little bit of green and brown uh, to the forefront of the, the yard so that you can see the shadowing and then uh, put in the flowers. So once you get your initial shape put in, you can start out by putting in your base color. Um, I went with a light tan color. It's the camel. And you're going to fill all of the base as well as the roof line with that. If you start off with something light, such as that, then it's easier to put in your shading. And then all you have to do is add a little bit of light color, such as a white mixed with that camel so that you can get in your highlights. We're gonna put a moon off to the left. So that's gonna be where your light's coming from. So you should be able to get the highlights coming off of that side. The moon is behind it, but you know how it is with a, a sky. You're gonna get those highlights regardless if it's in front of it or behind it. It would be much more highlights if it was in front, but being behind, we just wanna have a little bit of highlights so that you can show those rounded edges. Underneath the edge of that mushroom, you're gonna darken that up. I started off with the brown. I will eventually go back in and right along the very edge and the very um, area where the base of the mushroom meets the underneath of the bottom of the mushroom, you're gonna add a little bit of black so that you can really have that heavy, heavy darkness up underneath there. And I put a little window up there at the top of the mushroom. You can put that in, you don't have to, it's really up to you. Make it your own, you know how I do it. Choose different colors. You can put windows in instead of just a plain door on the bottom if you'd like. I opted just to put a cute little door and then I'm gonna put some trees and uh, some flowers and some some brush, so that's why I opted just to have the door, but you could put in just about anything that you want. 
Make sure you get all that shading around the edges or you're going to have a very flat surface. It's not going to appear to be um, rounded and um, it's not going to appear to pop out away from your canvas, which in this particular case is a rock. This is a pretty big rock. Um, I think it's about maybe four inches wide by like maybe six inches long. It's a, it's a fairly big size rock. Much bigger than I normally use. But I wanted to get a lot of detail into this, so I went with a larger rock. It is really flat, so it made a great painting surface. If you'll notice when I'm trying to blend in those highlights, I'll put in a lot of highlighted area, then go back in and start mixing the edges. As you're mixing those edges and as you're adding in those darker colors around there and trying to get it to blend, it will filter down to a smaller amount of highlight. So I tend to put in a little more highlight than I need. And then when blending the edges, you get down to what you actually want. I wanted the roof to appear to have a different color than the base. So I did add some red with that brown, quite a bit of red actually, and um, it, it gave it a really pretty soft color. And then just continue to work that paint around the edges until you get it blended well. As you're working with this, if you have um, a dry house or as I do, uh, I'm running fans, your paints tend to dry a little bit faster. So if you see me dabbing up there to the upper right a lot, that's where my water is. And I'm really trying to keep those paints from drying out too much so that I can get that good uh, blending around those edges. So I did use a lot of water on this one. But do what you need just to make sure that you get it all in there and get it blended. And here's where I put in that little extra dark um, underneath the bottom. You want to make sure, especially around the lip of that mushroom, that you really get that in there dark. And then we're going to go and put a few little lines along the edge and we're going to bring it right down into that bottom edge. And that's going to show little striations of that mushroom top. You can put in as few or as little as you want. I wanted to put in quite a few and make sure that you variate them. You've got some small ones, you've got some big ones. Just get them in there real good. And just keep every chance you get, put a little more and a little more dark underneath there so that you definitely have that distinction between the top and the bottom and then as you're going down to the bottom of uh, the base of the mushroom. Along that little window up on top, um, I do add a little more dark because that is catching a lot of shadow there. So I'll just keep darkening up along the edge of that. When you've got so many light colors in something, uh, you have to be careful. If you get too much dark in there, it's really hard to get the light back on the top of it. You can wait for it to completely dry and then paint over the top of it, but I, I tend to start with the lighter color and work my way up to the darker. That way I'm not, not having to paint over the top of something and try to cover up something real dark if I don't have to. I just put a little bit of color in that window. Shows that the lights were on inside. <clears throat> and I'll darken up the edges and make sure and get the little roof on the window that sticks out. It's a simple little stick out window there. Very simple. Shouldn't take you but just a second to sketch that in. If you need to, you can pause right now and you can look at that and make sure that you get your your directions in um, on the edges of that window. Make sure you darken one side. You know that the other side's gonna be the one that has the light on it. 
So you're probably going to need to have a little bit of light along that edge. I do believe I put some in here. Get all those edges nice and clean. And remember that that, that window is going to cast a little bit of a shadow. So especially along that right hand side and down underneath the edge, you want to make sure and get that shadowed in pretty good. Okay, this is what I used. I just used a little Tylenol bottle pill bottle that I had sitting on my desk. And that's what I put the sketched in the half moon with. It was just about the right size. So you get your white and you're gonna put it in. Now, once you get that completely in there, you're gonna go back and you're gonna shade part of it with just the slightest tinge of a gray. And that's gonna give it the illusion of, you know, the roundness of that moon. Also, you know, if you look up at the moon, there's some white areas and some dark areas. And I just dot some of those in and kind of blend them a little bit. You don't want perfect dots. Um, but, you know, a little dot and a little bit of blend, and it'll give you the that white, whitened area and the darkened areas like it looks like in the moon. This is the one time it is pretty important to get those edges almost perfect with that, that moon color. So make sure you take your time getting the edges of that moon in there. I probably could have put the moon in before I put the mushroom house in, um, but I wanted to strategically place that moon exactly where I wanted it. And not knowing where the house was gonna be until I painted it, it was easier to put the moon in afterwards. It wasn't that hard to get it around the edges of that one side of the house. And here's the shadowing that you're gonna put on the moon. And you'll see, you barely put any color in that, but you can tell that there's a difference in, in the color. And I left mine pretty bright. I, I didn't put a lot of dark darks in there. Um, I put a, that little bit of shadow, some white color in there, just to give it the uh, distinction of those, those round dots on, that you see on a moon. Kind of blend them in a little bit, but leave them so that you can see that there is some different colors there. And that's pretty much all I did with it. I wanted it to be bright. Like I said, we're gonna put some stars in the background as well, so. The brighter that you can make that part of the picture, the better off, because, you know, we've, we've lightened up that mushroom a lot. And so for it to be dark at night, middle of the night, um, you got to have that bright, bright moon to, to light up your picture like this. Add a few more darks. If you can see, every time I add a little more dark and a little more dark up underneath the edge of that mushroom, it really gives it that beautiful depth that you're looking for. It looks like it goes right way under there, but you do want to leave a little bit of lightness in the base where it's coming down out from the top underneath. That gives you the illusion that that base is connected, but it's way up underneath there where it's connected. Now we're gonna put in the shadow for the door. Um, I actually used black and brown for this because I really wanted it dark, but I didn't want it coal black. Then I threw in a little bit of darker brown around the edge of the door. And now I'm just taking my lining brush and we're gonna put in all those little bricks. Don't make them perfect. You don't want them perfect. Just kind of put them on in there as, as best you can, just as, 
abnormal as possible. And what you're going to do is you're going to go back in, you're going to make sure that each one of those bricks um, connects real good with the dark shadow that you initially put into that door. We're going to put some highlights on that, those bricks here in a little bit so that you'll see a little bit of shadowing on those bricks as well. And then here's the other place that I used a little bit of red, and that's with the front door. Uh, I think I used um, red and just plain, the, the darker brown. I just wanted a little bit different color. Now this is such a dark color, we are going to have to show that the light is bouncing off the front of the door. And we also need to be able to show that that's a wooden door, and so it's got slats. So I used some of the camel. I mixed it in with what was left of the red, just to give a, a one color lightness, one step lightness, and went back in and I put in some of that, um, those highlights and put in some of the striations of the, of the wood. And right in the middle where the two doors come together, um, I'll, I'll put a dark shadow and then a light edge and then that's going to show you right where those two edges come together. And I'll show you right here as we're working on that door. Trying to get those highlights in. There's the striations of the door of that wood. There, I just put a couple of simple little doorknobs. Now we're gonna put some shadowing down on the base of that mushroom where it comes to the, to the ground. Put in your stars. A couple of big ones, several little ones. You want them to show through those clouds as well as in the blue sky. So put, put them in all of them. I let them dry just a little bit and then I took a brush, kind of went over them and kind of fanned that brush out over them so that there was a little bit of a sparkle to each one. I'll show you this here in just a second. There you go so you don't have perfect little circles. Some of them in the, the blue sky will be perfect, but most of them will have a little bit of a, little bit where they're pushed out so it looks more of a sparkle. And then we're gonna put in some brown for the ground. We're gonna, Put our steps, our rock steps on that, as well as some greenery. Get your groundwork in. Now I decided to put a couple of little trees around this thing. So um, you'll see that After I get this <clears throat> highlight in, sorry. I played with that highlighting quite a bit because I really wanted it to look light, but I still wanted to keep that, that look of the mushroom. And I needed to put some highlights and some shading on those block. Once you get down a ways, you can put shading all the way around as well as you can put it around the edges there. Make sure you get that door. There's the highlight on that door I was talking about. And I really like the way this turned out. 
that door had dried and so I was able to take a tiny, tiny bit of white, I mean, barely on the tip of my brush, get it wet and then put it on and then work it. And when you do that, it just softly, softly lightens up those areas, which looks like a beautiful highlight. And once you get the door kind of the way you want, we'll start working on the rest of it. As you can see, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. Um, you don't have to put in the trees. I put them in just because I thought it would be a cute little addition to the sides there. Steps, super easy to do. Put in your light, light color, which is what I'm putting in now. And then you're going to go back and just remember, at the base of every one of those steps, you want it to be as dark as possible. So you're going to use your brown but you, and your black, but you're also going to put a tiny bit of greenery there because that, that grass is growing up between those those steps. And then those those blocks, of course, are not going to be white. So you're going to kind of dirty up some of those blocks with either a gray or um, a brown and white color. And make sure that some of them look like they have specific individual blocks. And some of them you can just kind of blur. Because you're going to add dirt and grass around it. And that's really going to make it look like it's a little overgrown walkway there. Just have fun with it. As you're pulling those through, add as much or as little of the greenery as you want. I really like greenery, so I tend to add probably more than most people. And I love the little shrub trees that we're going to put in. I wanted some color, and that's why in the very end I'll wind up putting some flowers in. So now that we have a Facebook page, a YouTube channel, and an Instagram, um, it really does take up a lot of time. So I've just about gotten back down to doing one video a week. So for a while, that's probably what you guys are going to see is, is a single video per week. But I'll try to make it something good. I've done quite a few gnomes over the last few weeks so i was trying to find something different um i did post in my facebook page wanting to know what kinds of things people wanted to see so i did get a lot of feedback and i'll try to pull some of those things and uh particularly push towards um what you guys are asking for I also had a viewer that uh, wanted to know if I did anything for um, new rock painters because she felt like everything that she had seen so far was way too advanced. And so please remember to go to the YouTube channel and at the very top hit videos and then you can scroll through all of my videos because I do several videos that are for beginners. Most people want to either see the really difficult things or the really easy things. Nobody wants anything down the middle. So scroll through there and you can pick the ones that you want to watch. And I do try to do a little bit of both.
the trees, if you do put in some little shrubs, don't make those difficult. Put in a, a base of a tree, put in your little limbs, pop it with a little bit of uh, greenery. This one, I didn't even shade or highlight this greenery just because it's going to be so much in the light that it's pretty much just going to be one shade. Um, I probably could have taken a little more time with it and put in some darker colors underneath, but I, I didn't want to overwhelm the picture with the trees. Like I wanted those to be just a tiny bit of a uh, filler on the sides to level out the picture and to, to, to bring your eye back to the main object, which is the mushroom house in the middle. And that was pretty much the only reason to have them. But you can take your time and you can put in a lot of effort and really get those trees in there solid if you want. The main thing is learning how you lay light on dark or dark on light in order to get things to pop off of your rock and actually look like it has a shape instead of just a flat surface. So I'm hoping that that is what you learned from these videos. Well, guys, there you go. Um, turned out pretty cute. I like it. I love mushrooms. Have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Bye now.